Hey everyone, it's Tony from TN3D Studio and in today's video, I'll be sharing some SketchUp tips to boost up your modeling skills. Now for those of you who are getting started, I hope some of these tips can improve your overall modeling experience and help you become more productive within your work. And for those of you who are regular SketchUp users, maybe you can get some new insight on in how you can apply some of these tips differently than how I am sharing here. I know this might sound kind of cliche, but understanding the user interface and the workspace is part of learning any software. In SketchUp, you want to get to know all the basic tools and organize all your toolbars, understand the key preferences, and eventually start optimizing so that it fits the type of work that you do. Now, depending on the project I'm working on, I like setting my geolocations to the proper address because this helps me get accurate sun and shadow information. In my animation settings, I usually like to disable scene transition because unless I'm exporting an animation or showing a specific path, I like moving pretty quick between my scenes. So let's check out some other preferences that might be really useful. Let's go under general, so here let's make sure that both the backup and auto save are checked. Let's also set a more favorable time interval. This is a guarantee that SketchUp is saving your work in the background every 5 minutes. And in case something was to happen, you'll be able to recover your work from the last saved backup file. As you review most of the options here, you will see that some of them are already checked by default to work in your favor but I still recommend you go through most of them just for your own peace of mind. You can also learn the basic tools pretty easy if you know where to look. To help with the learning, you want to make sure to reference both the instructor's dialog and your status bar for instructions on how to properly use these tools. To enable the instructor's dialog, make sure that your default tray is pinned, right click to manage, and make sure that the instructor is checked. As for your status bar, it should be on most of the times, but just right click and make sure all of the options are also checked. So let's review some of these basic tools. As you activate the tools, you can follow the illustrated guide on the instructions dialog for the tools operation, its modifying keys, and other helpful links regarding that tool. If you take the circle tool for example, we learn from the dialog to pull away from the center and click to set our radius. On the prompt, we learn to use both the control plus and minus to both increase or decrease the segments in our circle. So use both of these features as you learn your way through the tools and you can also refer to the instructions dialog when you're learning some of your favorite plugins like V-Ray. Now if you work in architectural visualization or any industry, modeling to scale is something you're expected to know. From your base model, imported 3D assets, and your textures, everything needs to be as close as possible to the real world. To understand scale, it's essential that you have a basic understanding of the metrics and imperial measures of length. And you may use one or the other depending on where you live. So let's review our units. Let's go to Window, Modeling Info, and Units. Based on my template, I am set to work with imperial units like feet and inches. And to switch to a matrix setting, you can change the format from architectural to decimal and change the units to either millimeter, centimeter, or meters. As for the precision and the rest of the other settings, they help you to be more accurate with your measurements, so choose what works best for your project. Another way to make sure your modeling to scale is to use the tape measuring tool to scale your model and your textures. This tool can also be extremely helpful when you're modeling from a reference image. In the case of this floor lamp, I can use the information from both the spec sheets and the dimensions in this reference image to create an accurate 3D model. Also keep in mind that when you use the tape measuring tool to scale, to use it inside the group so that it doesn't affect the rest of your model. As a regular SketchUp user, this may already be part of your workflow, but for everyone else, there are many ways components can be of benefit to your work. Now components work really well for commonly used objects. Because of the connection between the instances, a change that is made to any of the copies will reflect on all the others. 
and to break that connection, you can create a unique component by right clicking on one of the instances and selecting make unique. This new instance is now separated from the others but remains a component if ever duplicated. As a pro tip, you can start building your library of commonly used components. So think of items like your doors, your merchandising products, ceiling lights, and cutlery setups. This practice can be extremely helpful in speeding up your modeling time if you have all of these components ready to load into your project. Keep in mind that you can also save V-Ray and Enscape information inside these components, so it's in your best interest to build your library ahead of any project timeline. When we're talking about efficiency, it's pretty hard not to think of plugins and extensions. Because when you're working in SketchUp, you can only go so far working with the basic tools. And in time, you can see that creating a very detailed model can become time consuming. Now SketchUp alone is not fully equipped with the most advanced modeling functions, built-in rendering engines, and animation capabilities. So that's where plugins and extensions are extremely useful, to make the modeling simple and more enjoyable. Now there are a couple of ways to install plugins inside SketchUp. I'll leave a link in the description for more information if you're interested on knowing more of the details. But sign in into your Trimble account and you can access most of the free and paid plugins from the extensions warehouse. Let's go to window and click on the extension warehouse to launch. Here you can easily search for different plugins and extension and chances are there's already a plugin for whatever it is that you're searching for. You can search by categories, top extension, featured extensions like Sketch UV and TrueBand. These are all powerful free extensions that you can use. As for the developers, they took the time to solve some of these SketchUp challenges by developing these extensions. So remember that when you pay for anything in the extension warehouse, you are also supporting them to keep bringing these powerful tools for us to use. And as a final tip, I advise that you install the plugins and extensions that are optimal for your work and avoid having your workspace filled with toolbars you know you won't get to use. Using shortcuts bring everything together when modeling in SketchUp. Not only does it speed up your modeling workflow, they also save you the time and frustration of searching for tools through the toolbars. These are the shortcuts that are set up when you launch SketchUp and you can notice how almost 70% of your keyboard is available to be used as new shortcut keys. To customize your shortcuts, open the Windows drop-down menu, select Preferences, and choose Shortcuts. Here, you can search for all the SketchUp functions, including the ones you've installed from extensions and plugins. So select one of the functions, enter the new shortcut key, and click the plus sign to confirm. You want to assign new shortcut keys to the functions you know are essential to your workflow. And hopefully with time, you can start removing those plugins that are assigned to new shortcuts keys from your workspace. Keep in mind that you can also export your shortcut setups and later you can load it into another version of SketchUp. I try minimizing the number of toolbars I have floating across my workspace. And I try to use as many shortcuts as possible while keeping the most important plugins visible. And those are all the tips that I have to share in this video. Thank you for watching if you've reached this point. Hopefully have you followed these tips, you've created a custom template that benefits the type of work that you do. If so, like the video, share and subscribe for more content.